Hey, eighth graders. Okay, we're moving on again. We are, this entire unit is all about solving, finding systems, um, the solution to systems of equations. So we have practice graphing. I hope that you guys have the main idea that the solution to the system is the point at which these lines intersect. Okay, so if I were to ask you what is the solution of this particular system, you could tell me that it would be negative one, negative three. Okay, so negative one, negative three is a solution. So what we're gonna learn now is how to solve these systems algebraically. And there's two different ways. It's called substitution and elimination. Today, I'm gonna put two sections together and we're gonna do substitution. So substitution is replacing one value with another. In this situation, um, we are going to substitute this 3x into this equation for y. And I know that seems kind of silly, but if I said y equals 4, you would just put 4 into this equation and solve it, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to take this equation and we're going to replace y with what y equals. So y equals 3x. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. But instead of writing y, I'm going to put 3x in there. Because I know that y equals 3x. And then what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. So this turns into x minus 6x equals 5. And then x minus 6x equals negative 5x equals 5. Divide both sides by a negative 5 x equals negative 1. Was that our x? It was. Then we are going to take what x equals and we can put it in for our y equation. So if we know that x equals 1, we can take our equation and instead of writing a 1 there or a x there, I'm going to put my negative 1 in and I get y equals negative three. Is that what our x is or our y is? It is. So I just used this example to prove to you that you find the solution algebraically. So there's a couple of steps that make substitution easier. I know that you guys probably don't understand it after watching one problem and that's okay. So there's a couple of tips I have. And the first thing is that you want to isolate one of the variables and circle the other side of the equation. And this is kind of just, I'll, I'll show you what this means. So the next thing is to substitute substitute this expression into the other equation. So then number three, you're gonna solve the equation. And then number four, use the variable you know to find the one you don't, kind of like this. So let's solve the next equations. So on the first one, we have one of the variables by itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in for x right here, okay? And so I rewrite this equation, but instead of writing the x, I'm gonna put three y. And what this does is it gives us an equation with just one variable. And if you have an equation with just one variable, you can solve it. So this gives me 12y plus two y equals 70. 14y equals 70, divide both sides by 14, y equals, I believe it's 5. So when we have y equals 5, then what you do is you take and you put this 
into this equation. So I have x equals 3, but now I'm going to put 5 in. So my x actually equals 15. So my solution, make sure you put it in order, x and then y is 15, 5. Okay. So on to the next one. We have a variable by itself. So if you know what y is, you're going to put it in to the equation. So this is going to be 7x minus negative 5. Remember that would be that vertical line. Okay, so what this is going to simplify to is 7x plus 5 equals 12. And you're going to minus 5 from both sides. Remember you're trying to solve for x here. And then divide both sides by 7. x equals 1. You already know what 5 is, so you don't even have to do anything. So some of these actually come out a little bit easier than others. And that's your answer. How could you check this answer? You could put them both back into the original equations and see if they come out true. Okay. We're going to do a few more because it is good just to see what happens here. So these ones get a little bit harder, and the only reason they get harder is because what we put in, I'm going to maybe use a highlighter, gets bigger. So this is what's going to go in for x right here. Okay, so I always will write my equation. But instead of writing the x, I'm going to put in this. And you're going to need to put this in in parentheses. Minus 5y equals 7. Okay. So then what this turns into, you have to distribute. Negative 24y plus 36 minus 5y equals 7. Like terms, negative 29y plus 36 equals 7. Move the 36 to the other side. Negative 29y equals negative 29. Divide both sides by negative 29y equals 1. Okay. Now, if you solve the one equation, so I used the 6x equation to solve it, you have to put in the other expression, the other equation. So this is going to be x equals negative 4 times 1 plus 6. This gives you negative 4 plus 6, x equals 2. So my answer would be 2, 1. Okay, I hope it's starting to make a little bit more sense to you. Go on to the next one down here. And we're going to put this, because I've got the y by itself this time. This is going to go in for y right there. Okay, so I'm going to take my first equation, that negative 18x plus 3 times... I'm going to put this highlighted in here, and then equals 7. So notice that everything was the same except for the y. I put what y equals, oh shoot, good thing I checked that. It's even harder to talk and write video than before. So this went in here. So then I have negative 18x plus 3 times 6 is 18x. 3 times a negative 4 is a negative 12 equals 7. Okay. Now what's going to happen here, right away these cancel. And I get 
zero there and I get negative 12 equals seven. So what happens if something comes out not true? You remember, this is a no solution. And when we get a no solution when we're working with systems, that means that they are parallel. So this happens graphically, but it can happen algebraically too. So this is a no solution. These lines are parallel. Okay. Go back up here. And I am going to put this in for y. And so this is going to be a negative 4x minus 6 instead of y. I'm going to write negative 2x minus 3. Okay, and then I'm going to distribute negative 6 times negative 2 is a positive 12x. Negative 6 times negative 3 is a positive 18. Okay, combine like terms, negative 4x and 12x gives us 8x. Move the 18 to the other side. 8x equals negative 24. Divide both by 8. x equals negative 3. Then the negative 3, I'm going to go back in to this equation for your x. y equals negative 2 times negative 3 minus 3. y equals, this is going to be 6 minus 3, y equals 3. So your ordered pair, your solution is negative 3 positive 3. Okay, next one here, we've got x equals, so x is the one that's by itself, and we're going to put that in for this x. Okay, so I am going to take and I'm going to write 2, and instead of x, it's going to be 3y plus 16 minus 6y equals 32. So this gives me 6y plus 32 minus 6y equals 32. What do you notice right away? The 6y minus 6y, they cancel each other out. And you end up with 32 equals 32. Does 32 equal 32? Yep, this is a true statement. So this means infinitely many solutions. And what this means is if you <coughs> took both those equations, you could just get y by itself. And these are the same, these lines are the same line. Okay. Okay, so the last little situation here. It says, let's solve the word problem below by creating and solving a system of equations. Matt and Josh are brothers. The sum of their ages is 24. So if I took Matt plus Josh, I would get 24. Matt's age is six years less. So I'm going to say Matt's age equals six less than twice as Josh. So if you took twice Josh's age, and you took away six, you would have his age. So which variable do you have by itself? The M. So you're gonna put this in for M. So if I did this, I would have um, 2J minus six plus J equals 24. So 2j plus 6, 2j and 1j, 3j 
you have the six to both sides, 3j equals 30, divide both sides by 3, j equals 10. So Josh is 10 years old, and what does that mean of Matt? Well, Matt plus Josh equals 24, so how old is Matt? 14. So that is how we solve systems of equations. Now what I'm thinking of doing something a little bit differently, and um, this is your homework, the solving systems of equations part two. Okay, I want you guys to use some of what you know already. Now a couple things, if they are equal to each other, you can set them equal to each other. These seemed really simple to me, but some people really had a hard time with it. And then if they have negatives, it's kind of tricky. So what I would like you guys to do is I want you to do your homework and then I want you to tackle maybe like one or two other problems from the notes, okay? And we are gonna have some sort of little discussion about this um, the next time we get together. So um, I hope you guys have a great weekend and we will talk to you soon. Make sure if you are getting stuck, this is difficult stuff, so if you guys are getting stuck on anything, let me know and I'd be more than willing to go through examples with you. We'll talk to you later.